Good afternoon, Church. For today's lesson, claim what is yours. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your faithfulness and love for us. Please open our hearts and minds that we may understand each word that you want us to learn this afternoon. May your words be revealed to us and let your message retain in our hearts. We welcome the Holy Spirit to intervene to understand your teaching for today. Father, give us the strength to be a doers as well after listening to your message, that we can apply your word in our daily lives. Declare this place as a holy ground that no one can hinder to expose the truth behind your word. Please cover me at your back to reveal only your glory. Thank you, Lord, in everything. We bring you back all the highest praises and adoration. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. So good afternoon po sa lahat. Again, we are here to study the Word of God. So, kumusta po yung mga anak ng Diyos? I do believe by the grace of God na ang lahat ay in good health at nasa mabuting kalagayan. So, malapit na rin pong matapos ang taon and hopefully, mag-resume na din ang ating mga services in God's perfect time. Amen! Glory to God! So, for now, as we are going through, let us claim what is for us. Praise the Lord! So claim what is yours. So let us read Genesis 26, 1 to 17. A severe famine now struck the land, as had happened before in Abraham's time. So Isaac moved to Gerar, where Abimelech, king of the Philistines, lived. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt, but do as I tell you. Live here as a foreigner in this land, and I will be with you and bless you. I hereby confirm that I will give all these lands to you and your descendants, just as I solemnly promised Abraham, your father. So I will cause your descendants to become as numerous as the stars of the sky, and I will give them all these lands, and through your descendants, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. I will do this because Abraham listened to me and obeyed all my requirements, commands, decrees, and instructions. So Isaac stayed in Gerar. When the men who lived there asked Isaac about his wife, Rebecca, he said, She is my sister. He was afraid to say she is my wife. He thought they will kill me to get her because she is so beautiful. But sometime later, Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out his window and saw Isaac caressing Rebekah. Immediately, Abimelech called for Isaac and exclaimed, She is obviously your wife. Why did you say she is my sister? Because I was afraid someone would kill me to get her from me, Isaac replied. How could you do this to us? Abimelech exclaimed. One of my people might easily have taken your wife and slept with her, and you would have made us guilty of great sin. Then Abimelech issued a public proclamation. Anyone who touches this man or his wife will be put to death. So when Isaac planted his crops that year, he harvested a hundred times more grain than he planted for the Lord bless him. He became a very rich man and his wealth continued to grow. He acquired so many flocks of sheep and goats, herds of cattle and servants that the Philistines became jealous of him. So the Philistines filled up all of Isaac's wealth, wells with dirt. These were the wells that had been dug by the servants of his father, Abraham. Finally, Abimelech ordered Isaac to leave the country. Go somewhere else, he said, for you have become too powerful to us. So Isaac moved away to the Gerar Valley where he set up their tents and settled down. Amen. So Isaac learned a lot from his father Abraham. So he learned about faith in God and the permanence of God's promises. But unfortunately, he didn't learn from some of Abraham's mistakes. So like his father before him, Isaac lied to a powerful foreign ruler about the identity of his wife. 
but God changes situations in life to become an overcomer and learn to reclaim their lost wealth. First, Isaac was blessed by God despite of difficult circumstances. Amen? So Isaac is facing severe famine. So the same thing happens to his father Abraham in previous years where when he had taken him to Egypt. So as we can see here, Isaac moved to Gerar which is Philistine territory. Adversity was experienced in the form of famine. There's a severe famine that time and we know that Isaac had a family and he acquired many flocks of sheep, goats, herds, cattle and servants that he's taking care of and decided to move to the land of Philistines. So we learn also that Isaac made a big mistake through lying. Next, adversity due to his own making. So he lied in the same way that his father did. Isaac was afraid that the men in Gerar would kill him and get his beautiful wife, Rebecca. Where did he learn that trick? He may have known from his father, obviously. That is why parents live right so that your children may live right too. Sabi nga, kung ano yung nakikita or sinasabi ng matanda ay ginagaya ng mga bata. Your actions are often copied by those closest to you. So be a good example to your children. So now, being human, it is a natural thought to relocate to for provision sake. So like you and me, we came to UAE finding for greener pasture, for good wealth, good job, and etc. Marami tayong dreams. Nung first time natin pumunta dito, akala ko nga noon, after two years, mayaman na ako eh. At yun din ang expectations ng majority. Natural thought when relocated meaning for provision. Amen? So during pandemic time, many people relocated to different places for different reasons for something new. But in Isaac's situation, God stepped in. Ang sabi ng Diyos, ng Diyos kay Isaac, do not move, stay where you are. Why? Bakit sinabi ng Diyos yun kay Isaac? God stepped in for provision. And Isaac made a choice to obey God. So Isaac's situation is beyond his control. He cannot do anything about famine. But there is something that Isaac could do during famine. And what is the secret? God bless Isaac in spite of famine and opposition. So Isaac, Isaac started digging well. What you can get from the well? Of course, water. And what did water can do? It helps to sustain. It helps to cultivate. It helps sustain the flocks. And it helps moving toward prosperity. Where? In the midst of famine. While others in the midst of famine were struggling to survive, but Isaac decided to stay where he will become prosperous. So church, as you face the situations beyond your control, what is your choice? So Isaac decided to stay where he redig the wells which was previously dug by his father. So what happened to those wells? The enemy covered it with earth. The enemy hit and stopped the blessings of God. Tinabunan ng kaaway ang daluya ng pagpapala. Pero anong ginawa ni Isaac? He, ni redig niya, hinukay niyang muli, muling binuhay para maging daluyan muli ng pagpapala. 
Kaya mga kapatid, kung minsan para kayong nawawala ng gana magbasa ng Bible, walang gana sa mga gawain, dapat balikta rin nyo yung dapat gawin. Kung baga, maging mas masipag at matyaga sa gawain ng Diyos at malampasan ang gawa ng kaaway na siyang pumipigil sa mga pagpapala na para sa atin. Amen? So like Isaac, he did not stop in on doing his assignment to claim his father's blessings. So the God whom I know is the God of my father Abraham. He is my God. He is the God of all generations. He is a faithful God. He is a covenant-making God. He is the covenant-keeping God. He has not forgotten our forefathers. He has not forgotten you. He has not forgotten our children. He is our loving Father from generations to thousands generations. He wants to bless you, to restore you, and He wants you to rise up. He wants you to fight and take what is yours. Hallelujah! So God kept His promise to bless Isaac. So their neighbors grew jealous because everything Isaac did seem to go right. So they filled his wells with dirt and tried to get rid of him. Jealousy is a dividing force strong enough to tear apart the mightiest of nations or the closest friends. Kaya mga kapatid, huwag tayong mapag-imbot, mapanuri, huwag maingitin, selosa, seloso. Lahat ng iyan nakakasira ng pagkatao dahil yan ang spirit ng paninibugho, spirit of jealousy. At higit sa lahat, walang Christian na ingitero. Amen? It forces you to separate yourself from what you were longing for in the first place. And when you find yourself becoming jealous of others, try thanking God of their good fortune. So before striking out in anger, consider what you could lose. A friend, a job, a spouse, and others. So Isaac was blessed despite of the oppositions he faced. Amen? Praise the Lord. Second, Isaac was amazingly patient through all his hardships. So in Genesis 26, 18-22, He reopened the wells his father had dug, which the Philistines had filled in after Abraham's death. Isaac also restored the names Abraham had given them. Isaac's servants also dug in the Gerar Valley and discovered a well of fresh water. But then the shepherds from Gerar, Gerar came and claimed the spring. This is our water, they said, and they argued over it with Isaac's herdsmen. So Isaac named the well Esek, means argument. Isaac men then dug another well, but again, there was a dispute over it. So Isaac named Sitna, means hostility. Abandoning that one, Isaac moved on the dug and on and dug another well. So this time, there was no dispute over it. So Isaac named the place Rehoboth, means open space. For he said, at last. The Lord has created enough space for us to prosper in this land. Amen? So many times people face many hardships in life and became bitter. They keep on complaining and murmuring and comparing others' life. They are creating their own wilderness. Where God wants them to experience the oasis, a place of provision, a place of shelter, a place of protection, and a place of refreshing. A place where they can experience the super, supernatural power of God in spite of adversity around. So like, like what is happening during pandemic days. So like Elijah and Daniel, Shadrach and Abednego, and all others who experienced great trials and famines, 
God is telling us that we should not only claim the promises, but we should reclaim that we are the sons and daughters of the Most High God. So, claim what is yours through Christ Jesus. Amen! Hallelujah! So we see that Isaac was amazingly patient. He did not run away from the situations, but kept on digging. Isaac redug the wells that his father had dug. So Isaac retained the name of the wells. So the names which was given by his father, he retained those names. Isn't it amazing? Why? Because Isaac knew the power of covenant with God. Praise the Lord! And the covenant which I have or we have through our Lord Jesus Christ is powerful. Why? Because it is the blood of Jesus which is our covenant with the Father. His action displays reclaiming what was lost and Isaac was persistent in reclaiming what was lost. And we should do that also in prayer. We need to be faithful. We need to be persistent because people who has full of faith is not sitting with doubt. So always with hope in prayers, claiming the blessings of the Lord and do what has God called us to do. Amen. So whatever trials you are facing right now, never ever give up. Stand up in faith and do what God has told you to do. Isaac even dug new wells. His action displays reclaiming what was lost. He moved into nearby place and start digging. Even his facing oppositions and great trials, this did not stop him from digging. Amen? So church, God is fighting our battles, but we have to do something for Him. Dig the Word. Dig on your ministry. Dig the services to God. Cultivate our faith in God. Cultivate your members. Cultivate your ministries to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So God spoke to Joshua. He says, I had given you Jericho, and Joshua did what God has told him to do. Even David, he faced and fight with Goliath. With that, God bless him in everything. So brothers and sisters in Christ, this is a reminder to all of us. Despite of what is happening around, despite of pandemic, despite of COVID, we should focus and do our assignment, our task. Do not take it for granted. Do not stop in sharing the good news. Do not stop in sharing the word of God. Do not stop in attending or listening in church services, in Bible studies, and other activities. Even though Isaac faced severe problems and oppositions, yet he continued and named every well according to the situation. He faced his enemy and the enemy saw him growing in prosperity. They knew that Isaac was blessed by God and that they could stand with the spirit of jealousy. Tandaan po natin, when God wants to bless you, the enemy and the spirit of jealousy wants to come near you. But the good news is, the spirit of jealousy is powerless. Why? Because we are carrying the spirit of God, which is the Holy Spirit. Amen? There's always an adversary against you, but we are protected and covered by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah! Church, as you walk in submission, as you walk in faith, as you walk in power, as you walk in authority, as you walk in the name of Jesus, as you walk in your calling, as you are not afraid 
as you are fearless, as you are bold, the righteous are bold as lions, the accuser cannot do anything. Why? Because the blood of Jesus that covers you and stand in the name of Jesus. And the powerful name of Jesus answers every accusation of the enemy. The killer, the stealer, the thief is powerless in the name of Jesus. The enemy has no power to start to touch us. The enemy has no right to touch what is ours from God, even for our children and grandchildren in all our generations. So claim what is yours. Enough is enough. Do not allow the enemy to steal your blessings from God. And through the powerful name of Jesus, by giving his life on the cross and by coming back to life. And through the power of the Holy Spirit that resides in us, that operates through our lives to glorify the name of Jesus. Amen? So Christ is our hope of glory. It is the atmosphere of heaven. Means there is no lack. There is no need. There is no want. There is flourishing. There is prosperity in heaven. And there is life which is the life of God. Hallelujah! So Isaac did not discourage but kept going and kept on digging. So church, do not stop digging and move forward. It takes a lot of hard work. That is why we should not stop in digging our services to our ministries. Why? Because water is precious as gold. A person who dug a well was taking a claim to the land. Some wells had locks to keep thieves from stealing the water. To fill in someone's well with dirt was an act of war. It was one of the most serious crimes in the land. So Isaac had every right to fight back when the Philistines ruined his wells, yet he chose to keep in peace. So instead of fighting back, Isaac chose to move to a little further place. He chose to live in peace. So in the end, the Philistines respected him for his patience. So three times Isaac and his men dug new wells. So when the first two dispute arose, Isaac moved on. And finally, room was available for everyone. Amen? So rather than start a huge conflict, Isaac compromised for the sake of peace. Amen. So church, would you be willing to forsake an important position or valuable possession to keep in peace? So ask God for the wisdom to know when to withdraw and when to stand for fight. So everyone may face discouragement, but do not stay there. Move forward with the help of the power of the Holy Spirit. And as you continue doing God's work, you will be successful. You would become powerful and you will increase and you will have an honor and you will be comforted and you will be directed by God. So church, never ever give up. Move forward in faith because for every battle, God is with you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Next, Isaac ended up being a great blessing to his neighbors. It says in Genesis 26, 26 to 33. So one day, King Abimelech came from Gerar with his advisor, Ahusat. And also be called his army commander. Why have you come here? Isaac asked. You obviously hate me since you kicked me off your land. So they replied, We can plainly see that the Lord is with you. So we went we want to enter into a sworn treaty with you. So let's make a covenant. Swear that you will not harm us just as we have never troubled you. 
We have always treated you well, and we sent you away from us in peace. And now, look how the Lord has blessed you. So Isaac prepared a covenant feast to celebrate the treaty, and they ate and drank together. So early next morning, they each took a solemn oath not to interfere with each other. Then Isaac sent them home again, and they left him in peace. That very day, Isaac's servants came and told him about a new well they had dug. We found water, they exclaimed. So Isaac named the well Sheba, means oat. And to this day, the town that grew up there is called Beersheba, means well of the oat. Amen. So this is a great news. The same enemy who are against Isaac became his friends. Can you imagine that? Yung mga taong galit na galit sa kanya at ayaw sa kanya at pinalaya siya, ngayon gusto na siya maging kaibigan. Praise the Lord! Imagine King Abimelech would like to have peace with Isaac from opposition to friendship. Praise the Lord! Minsan, ramdam din natin yan sa office, di ba? Sa flat natin, sa church, yung taong ayaw sa'yo, minsan, ma-realize mo na lang, gusto ka na niya maging friend. Minsan, di mo naman din alam yung dahilan na bakit ayaw niya sa'yo, pero minsan, bigla na lang, in the end, siya na yung mismong lalapit sa'yo. Why? Dahil may kakaiba siyang nakikita sa'yo. Nakikita niya yung buhay ng Diyos sa buhay mo. Nakikita niya na hindi ka pala away. Kahit na anumang sinasabi niyo or nagpaparinig siya, hindi mo pinapansin, hindi mo pinapatulan. Hindi ka pumapatol sa nonsense. At higit sa lahat, nagliliwanag ang buhay mo sa mata ng ibang tao. Why? Dahil si Kristo ang iyong pinapamuhay. Amen? So Isaac has a good and humble heart. When his enemies wanting to make a peace treaty, Isaac was quick to respond, turning the occasion into celebration. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! So we should be just as receptive to those who wants to make peace with us. So when God's influence in our lives attracts people, even enemies, we must take the opportunity to reach out to them with God's love. Amen? God blesses Isaac a hundredfold, even beyond his imagination. So in times of famine, God blesses Isaac, an increasing influence, increase in livestock, increase in wealth, increase in manpower, increase in assets, growing everything, and blesses the works of His hands. Hallelujah! That is God's plan for us, to prosper us and not to harm us and to live in peace. Amen. So it says in Proverbs 16, 7, When the Lord is pleased with the decisions you made, He activates grace to turn enemies into friends. Glory to God. So here's the key. When the Lord is pleased with your decisions you made, prefer to walk according to God's plan. Never run away or never give up. Do something better. Do something greater. Rise up in faith and move ahead. Amen. So Isaac enemy saw the hand of God upon his life. In Pamin, Isaac grew a bumper crop. Meaning, in the midst of pandemic, your blessings are overflowing. Others were thinking for their food for tomorrow, but you have everything till the days of your life. As you said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall lack nothing. Amen. God is faithful and He called me and enables me by His Spirit to live in faithful life, a thankful life, a grateful life, a productive life. Whatever I do, the works of my hands are blessed. 
whatever I do, prospers. Amen. So they see him worshiping God. They see him moving forward. No one can stop you when God is with you. And lastly, Isaac obeyed God in everything what he has done, what has to be done. So because of his decisions, it pleased the Father. So Jesus' life was pleased the Heavenly Father. That is why he said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. He is not only a blessing to his family, but also to those around him. Brethren, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. As you obey God, as you make a choice, as you reach out, as you make disciples, as you go and claim what the enemy has stolen, to claim what is yours, the kingdom of God which was given to you, let it expand through your lives. Amen! Hallelujah! Next, Isaac, like his father Abraham, was also a worshiper of God. It says in Genesis 26, 23 to 25, From there Isaac moved to Beersheba, where the Lord appeared to him on the night of his arrival. I am the God of your father Abraham, he said. Do not be afraid, for I am with you and will bless you. I will multiply your descendants and they will become a great nation. I will do this because of my promise to Abraham, my servant. Then Isaac built an altar there and worshipped the Lord. He set up with his camp at that place and his servants dug another well. Amen! So Isaac built an altar and called upon the name of the Lord. Thanking the Lord, worshiping Him, acknowledge His goodness and faithfulness, Isaac keep going to the altar and many sees Him worshiping God. So he is a worshiper like his father Abraham. Sabi sa Genesis 26.3, And I will, I will be with you and bless you. At sa Genesis 26.24, Do not be afraid for I am with you and I will bless you. Amen? So Isaac was a man of great faith. So his father's faith becomes his faith. He walked in faithfulness. And through all this, Isaac grow more closer to God. Amen? So church, this is the challenge for all of us. Are you ready to redig every well that the enemy has closed and dig new ones too? Amen. Glory to Jesus. So as called and servant of Jesus Christ, I release the blessings of physical healing, financial breakthrough, and abundance in all the works of your hands. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus Christ's name, Amen. So, good afternoon po. God bless everyone. Shalom.